It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I just learned Discover credit cards do something pretty awesome. At the end of your first year, they automatically double all the cash back you've earned. That's right. Everything you earned doubled. All the cash back from eating at your favorite soup dumpling restaurant doubled. All the cash back from the trip where you sort of learned how to snowboard also doubled. And the best part, you don't have to do anything ridiculous to get it. Nope, Discover does it automatically. Seriously, though, see terms and check it out for yourself at discover.com slash match. Welcome back, everybody, to your source for fantasy hockey news, the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. And on today's episode, we are breaking down the top breakout fantasy stars of the past season, 10 through 6 and taking a look at some of these players that you might have to draft a lot higher next season. Thank you for joining us. Let's get right to it. You're locked on fantasy hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. Thank you for joining us, everyone, for the Tuesday episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. I'm joined, as always, by my esteemed co-host, Mr. Steele Roden, and you've seen his work all across YouTube under NHL Quick Hits and, of course, all across the Locked On Network. Make sure you're checking him out. You know your boy, Big Flip Livingstone. I'm here for you, along with Steele, Monday through Friday. You've seen my work all across the top networks that you find your fantasy news. And thank you for making us your first listen every single day. I'm fired up for today's episode, Steel. We got to start taking a look at some of these countdowns, our top 10s, top 15s, because these lists like today's, the breakout stars, fantasy studs of the past season, this is going to make major impacts for next fantasy draft. We might have to juggle where you're taking some of these players because they did break out in such fantastic ways. We're also going to have to break this episode up. We're going to do 10 through 6 today, and we're going to get to our top 5 later in the week. I got some honorable mentions as well. Intrigued for your list, my friend. Thanks for joining me as always. Let's get right to it. Who you got at the in your honorable mention slot, if you have any, or why don't you just hit me with your 10 guy? Yeah, there was a lot of players that I uh, made a list on uh, that could have been easily on the breakout fantasy players of this season. I have a few on the honorable mentions. Two Love guys it. that I just want to, I'm just going to say their names. Brandon Montour and Tage Thompson, they got to be on this list. Tage Thompson could be on the top 10 breakout fantasy players, but I have another Buffalo Sabre player in my top 10. So I thought I'd keep it to one Buffalo Sabre for this list. So Brandon yeah. Montour, Tage Thompson, they deserve an honorable mention. But one last honorable mention uh, mention is Sam Montembeau of the Montreal Canadiens. I think mm, his numbers, interesting. Uh, I think his numbers are a little bit underwhelming from what we saw. He, you know, 16-9-3 nine, nine record in 39 games mm-hmm. started. So he wasn't mm-hmm. technically the starting goaltender. But when you've got a defensive group as poor uh, as the Montreal True. Canadiens in front of him, it makes the numbers not look so great. A 901 save percentage, a three, uh, 3.42 goals against average. So I just wanted to give him some love because I, I like thought he that. was a lot better than what the numbers show. And if they can get if he, if he can get some help in front of him on the blue line, then uh, then he's got a bright future. He still has a bright future, but wanted to showcase uh, some love over to Sam Montebo, mm. the Montreal Canadiens. At number 10, though, it's actually another Canadian team. Oh, uh, Andre Kuzmenko comes in at number 10 for me. First yes, season in the league at 27 years old. Technically a rookie season in the NHL, but he's 27. And honestly, after the season he just put up, I kind of understand why Vancouver chose him over Bo, Bo Horvat. Like, I love Bo. Hey. Great forward, great power forward. I think he has a bright future on Long Island with the New York Islanders. Love mm-hmm. him to death, but I, I can understand why they went with, uh, like, Andre Kuzmenko over Bo Horvat. 39 goals, yep. 74 points in his first year with the Canucks. Yep. And that's only playing just over 16 minutes of average ice time this season. So if he, right. again, if he's up on the first line, he's playing with JT Miller, Elias Pedersen, mm-hmm. some of those other guys that can help out. His minutes are going to right. increase, and that means his fantasy points are going to increase. He had 143 shots, 18 blocks, and 13 hits. You're not going to get a lot of those peripheral stats, especially the blocks and hits, but especially if he can get some more ice time and playing on that top line with Elias Pedersen, 
expect the goals, the mm-hmm. points, and the total of shots to go up next season. Uh, and I would I wouldn't be surprised if he's playing eight and a half, 19 minutes, but with Elias Patterson next uh, next season, no question. He's a top 75 in fantasy points next year. I was really intrigued to see who you would have on this list and where. And I've got Kuzmenko at nine. And I'll leave the explanation short at that one because you hit the nail on the head for me and explained it nicely. Stepping into the NHL, though, at 27 years old from the KHL, I'd like to run a little bit of research here on how many players have stepped from the KHL and in their first season in the NHL put up almost a 40 piece. Very impressive and very intrigued to see what he can do. Look, also, the Canucks were a hot mess both on and off the ice. Yeah. He was like one of the lone shining things aside from Pedersen. Um, and obviously, Quinn Hughes, I think, was a really under the radar season as well, offensively especially. So I agree with you 100%. So he's at nine for me, and I'm you got to keep your eye on him because if he pops 40 in the first year, you can't help but feel that he can even do maybe even more in his second season. Anyway, honorable mentions. Rasmus Dahlin was really good for me. I don't, you mentioned a Buffalo Saber. I don't know who you have up on the list. (laughs) I understand that in his career, he was, you know, he was getting there. He was really progressing nicely. So for me, he didn't maybe crack the top 10, but he was impressive for me. He started to really block shots, lay the body, establish himself physically. You and I have talked at length about what we think is happening in Buffalo. Now they got themselves a really good young goaltender as well. So keep your eye on the Sabres. He needed honorable mention. And speaking of 40 goal scorers, not many of them in the NHL. Adrian Kempe also had a very good postseason. In my opinion, he doesn't deserve the top 10. There are a lot of really good players who broke out this season. Adrian Kempe was an honorable mention for me, along with Darlene. And at number 10, because I wanted to balance out this list deal. I got D-men, I got forwards, and I have two goalies. And at number 10... After stepping out into his first real role as a starter, topping out before in the NHL at 17 wins, Alexander Gorgiev had 40 wins steal. And actually, I know he was a little rough in the postseason, but goaltenders who put up 40 wins and who are on really good teams, which he will be again next season, you can say what you will about his overall game. He's going to get wins, and he almost had a 920 save percentage in the regular season. For me, Gorgiev, after topping out at 17 wins, He was a breakout fantasy star for me, sliding in at number 10. I don't hate that pick whatsoever, uh, especially in this top 10 category. I don't have Alexander Gorgiev. He probably should be in the honorable mentions for me, but I also have two goalies on this top 10 list. I went in a little bit of a different direction um, Mm -hmm. with my goaltender. And at number nine, it's actually Philip Gustafson of the Minnesota Wild who comes in at number nine. I thought he had a pretty breakout season. Uh, for a guy who, you know, first season as a somewhat starter in the NHL, finished with a 22-9-7 and yep. record, a 2-10 goals against average, and 9 I'd say he's a starter season. now, Steele. I'd he say is, he's that, and that's why, he's, that's why yeah. he's on this list, because he Fair. will be the starter Fair. moving forward next year. You know, obviously they still have Marc-Andre Fleury, and that's a fantastic guy to back you up. Uh, mm-hmm. And a guy that can come in if, you know, God forbid, Gustin can go down to injury or something happens, but... Right. Yeah, pretty good record, 931 save percentage, mm-hmm. second best goals against average, second best save percentage this season, of course, uh, behind Linus Allmark. Um, and to me, was by far the best player for the Minnesota Wild in the postseason, in the first round against the Dallas Stars. He kept them in the series. He kept the games close. Um, and they just couldn't get any offense going. He was the true reason why that, that series went six games. It could have been less if it wasn't for him. Uh, but this this was a player, a goalie, that wasn't even drafted in fantasy leagues this season, this past right. year, and right. ended the year at 70% rostered in both ESPN there you and go. Yahoo Fantasy Leagues. That just shows you how great this guy mm-hmm. is. Also, turning 25 on June 7th, hashtag Gemini season. Baby. Hey. So hey. That's why he's on the list as well. But Love he's it. young, he's big, he's got mm-hmm. great mobility, mm-hmm. great uh, mm-hmm. flexibility. And I think he would just be a great goaltender for a dynasty setup. He's 24 years Agreed. old. Agreed. There's a lot to love with his Agreed. game right now. There's a lot to love with the Minnesota Wild. Matt Boldy, Kaprizov, mm-hmm. uh, you know, on the back end as well, Kalen Addison. There's a lot to love with this Minnesota Wild team. They've got some great prospects in the lineup right now. They're in the queue. Uh, Marco Rossi, uh, Marco mm-hmm. Rossi even as well. Mm-hmm. So a lot of young talent on this Wild team. But Philip Gustafson is a, a player that I will be looking to draft next year.
I'm really intrigued to also see Steele what now he does get, you know, what is he at 39 games last season? So the numbers are impressive, but I, you know, I really want to see what he gets now that realistically, you know, I see him getting at least 55 games, you know, if not maybe 60 games, flower plays, maybe 18 to 20 ish Mm -hmm. in relief, if all goes to plan. So for me, he's definitely a bona fide number one option. He's definitely going to be drafted. And he could be one of those guys, Steele. We know we like to say this, but it's one of the good mantras that fantasy GMs need to know. Shout out Michael Amato, you know, of Sportsnet, one of the (laughs) friends of the show that we will have back on soon. He could be one of those guys. Wait a little bit. Pounce on him in a little bit of a later round. Not too late because I think the Wild will be buzzing around for one of those top three spots in the Central once Mm -hmm. again. But he's a good option. I've got a couple of other options that I want to talk about around the break. I already got to my 10 and my nine spot. I got eight, seven, and six to line up. I got Kuzmenko in the ninth spot. So we'll skip over that one because you already talked about that. Or Kuz, hey, (laughs) seven, eight, and six. Coming up after the break, today's episode, though, my friends, is brought to you by Athletic Greens and AG1. Steele and I love popping a little AG1. You just need one scoop in water every day or even better. Drop it into your smoothie, hit the gym, and feel what AG1 does for you with just one delicious scoop every single day you're getting. 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens that all help you start your day right. The special blend of ingredients, it supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system. Helps keep your energy up. It helps you recover, focus, and age with grace. All the things that you want. Make sure... You are checking it out. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free or gluten free, and it contains less than one gram of sugar in each scoop. Athletic Greens also has over 7,000 five star reviews. So right now, reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition with just one scoop in water every single day. That's it. No need for a million different pills. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you one free year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Head over to athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. That is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Hey there, Locked On listener. Erica L. Ayala from Locked On Kraken here. And I just learned Discover credit cards do something pretty awesome. At the end of your first year, they automatically double all the cash back you've earned. That's right. Everything you've earned doubled. All of the cash back from eating at your favorite soup dumpling restaurant doubled. All the cash back from that trip where you sort of learned to snowboard also doubled. And the best part, you don't have to do anything ridiculous to get it. Nope. Discover does it automatically. Seriously, though, see terms and check it out for yourself at discover.com backslash match. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast Mm -hmm. your first listen every single day. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where you can find a Locked On Podcast of your favorite team in all four major sports leagues and the NCAA, your team every single day and make sure you're tuning in for thursday's episode where we will have locked on devils host trey matthews joining us to break down the new jersey devils fantasy team for next season everything you need to know as well stay tuned for friday's episode for mailbag friday as well Mm -hmm. as the continuation of this top 10 breakout fantasy fantasy players from the 2022 season five through one but let's continue with 10 through six at number eight right now, I'll throw it over to you, Flip. We just finished up talking about Andre okay. Kuzmenko, Philip Gustafson, mm-hmm. Alexander Gorgiev mm-hmm. at 10 and 9. Who's mm-hmm. in your number eight spot? And this is just a guy steal that he was going to get honorable mention because I understand fantasy value is what we're really getting at here. We're the fantasy mm-hmm. show. But I think this player at 20 years old had to make the list for me in Matty Beniers only because I really think after what I saw in the postseason – And I know there was a lot of players that could have made this list. And I'm sure you and I are going to disagree on a couple of these guys. But let me just make the case this way. Four game-winning goals for Beniers, 20 years old. We saw his 10 games in his first, you know, end of the season, two seasons ago. Point-a-game player. He looked really good in the postseason for me, Steele. And 
okay, Kraken fell short. He went a little quiet, but yeah. let me just pull it up because I read it earlier. Three goals, four assists, almost 18 minutes a game per night in the postseason. And he got it done in the regular season steal for me. 148 shots. I'm going to say he gets the puck on net a lot more next year with confidence. I just see where he's at now. I think he's really maybe, maybe it's a one year too early for him as the breakout, but I just needed to have him on my list because I think he's really going to be a superstar in this league. A little bit more of a sneaky guy, more cerebral, but at number eight, he's high on my list because I'm high on him as a player. Yeah, you know, I don't hate it. I think it's a little early for him to be a breakout player right now. I don't it hate is. it. I don't hate it whatsoever. I also have a Seattle Kraken on this list as well. And I think you probably know who it is. I'll get to him when I get to number seven. But at number eight, uh, I actually have a Winnipeg Jet player. Oh, I knew. Pierre we have the same. Luke Dubois. Oh. Have Pierre, I have Pierre Luke Dubois on this list. Okay. And it's up for debate. I think this yeah. is where you and I might disagree a little bit if he's in that breakout category for this season. But I'm going to go with, yes, a little bit of a breakout <laughs> player. 27 – I'll explain why. 27 goals, 63 Hit points in 73 games. So far, it's his best outing. It's his best year – his best season uh, up to date. And okay. for me, I still believe he's only scratching the surface right now. I think he is Fair. up for a big year. And I think he's a great player for Banger League. 77 mm. penalty minutes. Typically anywhere from 80 to 125 hits a season. He gets shots, he gets blocks, and mm. you and I can agree on this. We don't know what the problem is in Winnipeg right now, but there's clearly no. a problem in Winnipeg, whether it's the leadership, the communication, mm. discipline. I don't know. Maybe it's just a locker room energy problem. I don't know right. what it is, but they might have to start cleaning house and it looks like they will do. Uh, it seems that way. They so might, trending yeah. that way for this off season, Connor Hellebuck rumors about him potentially being traded. He wants to that be with be a spicy. contending team. You it know what I saw spicy. steel actually a couple of little rumors, Hellebuck to Ottawa. You see that? I saw that as well. I saw Hellebuck yeah. to Ottawa. I saw yeah. Kyle Connor's name being mentioned around the rumors. I've seen Mark Shifley. We've even seen Pierre-Luc Dubois for the last year connected Montreal. to uh, the Montreal Canadiens. Mm -hmm. So, Look, whether he is traded or whether he's not traded, I think he's up for a big year. Um, okay. Within reach, 30 goals, 70-plus points. He finished with 63 points in 73 games last year. Uh, so if he can play up to 80 games or hopefully a full season, I don't think 30 goals is out of the question. I don't think 70-plus points is out of the question. He's a dominant okay. force in the offensive zone and a very physical guy to play against. So. It's up for debate whether it was a breakthrough season this year, but I think he's yeah. up for one next year. And I like how we're taking, we're copping out a little bit with how we're looking at that, but that's okay <laughs> because I think at the end of it all, regardless of what we think for this season, because I'm looking at it a bit more of guys who have kind of done things in a big way, and this is, I'm going to get to a Winnipeg yep. jet, a jet in a second who haven't done it before. Regardless, you're going to have to keep your eye on these guys for next season because either – they're teeing themselves up to continue to be studs and breakout players, or this breakout might be a flash in the pan. And this is where mm -hmm. I'm going to say this with Josh Morrissey, because he had an amazing season. Yeah. He, I was believe, was top 35 in NHL scoring with 76 points. Also, 119 block shots, 90 hits, 175 shots on net. He was a very valuable piece. And I saw yeah. in a few leagues that I was in this year because Morrissey was drafted so late, a couple of guys who won leagues this year. Morrissey is that type of guy that you got him in his breakout year. He needs to get a little bit of love for it. But here's the caveat. So he's in there at number seven for me because he was a really valuable fantasy defenseman. And if he's in yeah. the top 35 in scoring... And, oh, wait, he topped out at a previous career high of 37 points, and he had 76 steal. To me, that's a breakout fantasy star. But be careful with what you do with him next season because mm -hmm. of all this activity with the Winnipeg Jets. So that's one of those caveats that I wanted to mention, that be wary if you see this 76 points and all of these peripherals, get yeah. too high on Josh Morrissey and get burned because Winnipeg's a bit of a hot mess next year. Yeah, it looks that it looks to seem that way. I love how we're going back and forth with some Jet players and uh, a little bit of the Seattle Kraken players as well. Mm -hmm. That's who I've got at number seven, Seattle Kraken's forward Jared McCann. I also wanted to put Vince Dunn on this list because he did have a breakout Whoa. season as well. Uh, I just don't know if he can keep up with that next year and keep up with that progression. 
But at number seven, I have Jared McCann. And he's okay. progressed and he's developed. Yep. And every single year he's been in the league so far. I love this guy's game. You do. He scored, scored 27 goals and had 50 points last year for the first time. First time scoring 20 plus goals or even recording mm-hmm. above 40 plus points. He follows that up this past year with a 40 goal season and 70 points total. If that's not a breakout season, I'm not quite sure what is. 210 shots, 65 hits, and 25 blocks. He gets it done. And he does this, again, only Mm. playing 16 minutes of ice time for the Seattle Kraken. It's it's actually insane why he's not up to 18 and a half, 19 minutes. Again, Dave Haxtell, he's the coach. He's the coach for a reason. And we like Haxtell. We do like Haxtell, but give my boy some more minutes. He needs the ice time. And again, after all that we've witnessed with Seattle this year, amazing team chemistry, great Mm -hmm. work ethic, a good mix of veteran players who seem to be rejuvenated now, as well with a a few players entering their prime, like Jared McCann, Vince Dunn, uh, 26, 27. And then you've got the young talent like Matty Beneers, Shane Wright, and Morgan Geeky. So Mm -hmm. they've got a great balance of all these players right now, and they're gelling. They've got great chemistry. And the thing that I love about Seattle Seattle doesn't have a single contract over $6 million right now. They've got $21 million in cap space for this offseason. Good point. They don't, they, I think they, they might have the least amount of RFAs or UFAs on their team right now. Um, and I think this offseason, they might make a huge splash. They might try to land a, a stud free agent this summer. I Hopefully they do. And again, for Jared McCann, he's in his prime right now. He's turning 27. And again, mm. all I ask, if you're the Seattle Kraken, Dave Haxtell, just Play give him, some, him more. some more ice time, please. Hey, we're, again, got to keep your eye on that situation headed into next season. There were some player, some players still, you know, he totally, I totally agree. Can't even disagree on that one. Breaks out for sure. I just, I got some players on this list. I don't know where your top fives is going to be at. I'm excited to see. I got a Dallas star or two in this bad boy in the top five steal. That's a little tease to Friday's episode. Make sure you stay tuned for the rest of the week. Steel mentioned it nicely. We got special guests. We're going to have the top busts of the season fantasy wise. Pay attention for that one as well for fantasy GMs. Steel, I got one more player that I really want to talk about. Let's get there right after this break. I also have a Dallas Stars player in the top five. So I can't wait till hey. Friday's episode where we break down five through one of the top 10 breakout fantasy players from 2022-23 season. But thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Make sure you hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. You can find us on your favorite podcast platform, including YouTube. And Flip and I appreciate all the love, all the support you show mm-hmm. us every single day. Don't be afraid to leave us a review on Apple or Spotify as well. We appreciate all the feedback. Mm -hmm. DM us on Twitter, LO underscore fantasy NHL. We will get back to you as soon as possible. But Flip, let's continue with 10 through 6 of this top 10 list. And I'll throw it back over to you so I can uh, close my mouth for a little bit. Flip, who's at your number 6 spot right now? So did you pop off all 10 through 7 already? You got your 6 left as well? Is that where I have my I have my 6 left as well. Love it. Okay, because the, you know, the top of the list, interchangeable for us. We're pretty much agreeing. You know, my Matty Beneers projection may have been a little bit early, but I just think you got to kind of jump on him now. If guys in Keeper Dynasty Leagues who, if he still is out there next year, jump all over him. Anyway, Mm -hmm. this is a player that I think you and I had talked a little bit about this season. And I just think if he's getting it done with the Arizona Coyotes and Clayton Keller, yeah. 37 goals this season. That's 12 more than last season. 23 more points than his previous high. 223 shots on goal steal. He gets it done at all forms on the ice. I just, again, I like to me, the, the lens on what we're looking at is different. I don't know if you even have him in the realm of breakout, but I just am so imp- Seventh overall pick, 24 years old. Playing with some very interesting lineup situations over the last couple of years in Arizona. He's starting to really find his confidence. And I think this guy is going to get plucked. He's going to get plucked by a big time team. I like, I honestly, I could see the New York Rangers. I could see someone big U S market taking this guy. And he's just a stud. He, he, pardon me. 
that would be incredible. If that I just think he's got that confidence and he's got that swagger. Oh, he yeah. played in Boston University. That is a hockey hotbed. Mm-hmm. You know, he's from, you know, he's from the Arizona Coyotes franchise. So I just am very excited with this player steal at 24. I think he broke out in a big way. 49 oh, assists, yeah. 86 points. He also has 50 penalty minutes. He takes some dumb penalties at times, yeah. which is a good <laughs> thing for fantasy owners <laughs> for those banger leagues. I just think if you can get also 20 minutes of ice time a night for a 24 year old player, that's got to be up there in the league. And I love his skating ability. I love his shot breakout candidate. I want it. He had, he was an honorable mentions. He was at the 10th spot. He lands in at number six, because I think you're going to see 95 plus points from Clayton Keller next year, especially if the coyotes do what they do and move on from yet another good young player. Cause that's just what happens. Look, I'm I'm surprised that he's not even higher at like 26 minutes a night because they need him to be playing almost every single True. shift. It seems like Flip, you know he's on this list for me. You know he's hey! on this list. He's at yes. number five, so I don't even have to talk about him for Friday's episode. Boom. He's a he's one spot ahead uh, ahead of your at number six, but can't even hate that. He has to be on the top ten list. Clayton Keller. Love it. I'll get to him for Friday's episode, but at number six. This is where my Buffalo Sabres player comes in. And you talk about Clayton Keller, a number seven overall pick. How about Dylan Cousins, seven ov- uh, a seventh overall pick in 2019 of the Buffalo Sabres as well. For me, Dylan Cousins has to be on this list. Uh, like 22 years old. To go from playing you know, 20, the 2021-22 season, he played 79 games and had 38 points, was minus 19. So to go from that to this year where he played almost the entire season, played 81 games, went from scoring 13 goals to 31 goals, 25 assists to 37 assists. He finished with 68 points in 81 games this year, had 41 penalty minutes. He shoots, he hits, he's physical, he fights, he does a lot. For a kid who's 22 years old, he does almost everything, and he does that with 16 and a half minutes of ice time. I love this guy a lot. 211 shots this year, a 15% shooting uh, shooting percentage this year, just under 15% at 14.7. But yep. Dylan Cousins had a breakout season. And when you go, to, you know, when you look at the Buffalo Sabres moving forward, Tage Thompson, Rasmus Dahlin, JJ Paterka, who just played great in the world mm-hmm. championships as well for his, uh, for his home country as well. The Buffalo Sabres, We've talked about this almost all year. Loaded. They will be so loaded, so mm-hmm. loaded. They will be at maybe. How about Owen Power as well? Yeah, Owen Power. Look, there's a lot of guys I could list. Yeah. Off. Uh, Jack Quinn, Peyton Krebs in, in the yep. queue as well. They've got a mm-hmm. ton of guys in the queue right now. And now and Levi. Yeah, Levi as well. Again, that's the question mark. If they if they can get Levi or just a, a starting, a true starting goaltender right now. They're, they're no question going to be a contending team within a matter of years, maybe even next year uh, with the young talent that they have. So at number six, I finish off with Dylan Cousins. I think one of the first like top fives that you and I did, it was top five guys, 22 or under. And Cousins <laughs> slid in at, I think, my fifth. And you were like, oh, you know, he had rough. I just have always liked this player, Steele. He deserves to be on this list. Thank you for bringing him up because also at the end of the day, when you start to look at fantasy, the fantasy landscape, especially in Keeper Dynasty, which you know has a big piece of my heart and attention and <laughs> oh, budget yeah. for fantasy hockey, you have to kind of look at these teams that are setting themselves up nicely for the future and strike on the ground floor. This isn't rocket science. Do your research. Plan ahead. Who's loaded up with picks? Who is drafting well? Because now you're seeing it like you mentioned. This is what now? Three or four or five drafts moves and otherwise from the Buffalo front office that is really starting to pan out. Now you're going to start to see that success on the ice. So jump in on the ground floor. Dylan cousins is going to be one of those guys steal, especially if he gets off to a hot start start next season, he'll be gone and his ownership will be right up in there to the 90 percentile. And he won't be uh, under the radar or breakout star anymore. He'll just be a star that you're probably not going to be able to get unless you draft him very high. There's a lot to love about his game. He will be a very sought-after player. Eh, six, seven, eight, ninth round? I think around there is pretty fair enough for Dylan Cousins. Maybe like a, ninth round. 
I like the sound of that. I like ninth and eighth round. I like the sound of that Depends on how dedicated the league is. It really does. if it's a little bit more shallow of a league, he might fall off the table a Mm -hmm. little bit because you're just not paying attention to the name. Buffalo Sabre, you know, not a top-line guy, even though he might have the potential. But you know what I'm saying? Like all those kind of regular fan fantasy things that you look at to start. If your league's not that deep, you don't need to look at that much more. But it depends. I like the ninth round, though, eighth round even, or higher for dedicated circles. He will be very sought after next year. Like a lot of these guys on the top 10 list that we have, we will break down five through one on Friday's episode. Thank you so much for making the Lock On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Make sure you're tuning in Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning Eastern time is when you can find all of our episodes. Hit the subscribe, hit the follow button, and Flip and I appreciate all the love and support you show us every single day. Have a great day today. Good luck with all your bets. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.